Hi, my name is Xavier DeRus. I live in Aventura, Florida, and this is my 45 gallon tank, just the tip. Um, I call this tank just the tip because the central point of the aquascape up at the top over there sticks out of the water at just, just a little bit out of the water. Um, the tank is designed centrally around the, the quintessential mixed reef where we have softies, LPS, SPS, and non-photosynthetic non corals, um, which are my personal favorite. And I, I think that there are many categories of corals and I've tried to include a lot of them, um, but there's always room for a couple more. Um, I started the tank because I moved to Florida from California and as a real addict would know, you can't have a home without a reef tank. So this was our, our big project my roommate and I got matching tanks and we put them side by side um, in order to fill the living room with our, our different ideas of the reef keeping hobby and, and what to stock a tank with. Um, I, I wanted to lay out a couple of ideas as far as the aquascaping and I, I, knew, I knew that I wanted a coral atoll, um, kind of like a separate island, which is what I designed with the sun corals and the dendrophilia. Um, but I wasn't sure what to do with the actual main aquascape, so I designed just a little bit of the rock work out of the water, um, just in, in to include areas for the intertidal species, such as the hermit crabs and the snails, to catch a break, um, as they would naturally. So the tank is not very big. That was a reality that I had to face early in the design stages. And at being only three feet and 12 inches tall, um, I, I realized that I was going to have to compartmentalize a lot of the corals, so a lot of the LPS that have a stronger sting are going to have to go together, whereas I can put the, the zoanthids and the um, protopalithoas together as well and to create sections of the rock work that won't harm one another and uh, will get along. So gorgonians are a, a very important part of the aquarium for me. Um, I like the height that they provide. I like that they sway in the, the water movement. Um, I also like that it's just something different. You don't see a lot of gorgonians in aquariums. So for me, that was an important part of doing my aquarium and, and incorporating that into my livestock choices. Um, fortunately, we live in southern Florida where there's a lot of gorgonians that are legally collectible um, and easily obtainable in shallow water um, that, that I could incorporate in my tank, my roommate's tank, um, is also full with a lot of the endemic gorgonians. My uh, girlfriend's seahorse tank is almost chock full of them. Um, they're just a, they're a nice addition that I think a lot of aquariums could, could be benefited from and um, I incorporated a couple of species in my tank here. Um, you can see this, the sea fan behind me, and as well as there's a, a golden rod um, gorgonian that we collected. I haven't seen another one yet, um, except for the one, the one colony that we found. But some cool, some cool options for something that's a little bit different. I'm a big proponent of feeding. Um, I, by all accounts, would say that I heavily overfeed my tank. I put about five cubes of frozen food or the equivalent of that in my tank every day and it being only 45 gallons um, that means that nutrient export is also very important. I have a skimmer that's rated for three times the tank volume to help with that and to, to keep up on the phosphates um, but I do also believe in having a little bit higher levels of phosphate and nitrate in your system um, because my tank, being a mixed reef, needs that for the, a lot of the softies and the LPS, as well as the non-photosynthetic corals need to have almost uh, a constant supply of food. Otherwise, they just slowly starve since they're not getting that extra food energy from the photosynthetic algae like the, the photosynthetic corals are. I, I'm a big proponent of just giving a variety of food rather than any one staple product. Um, it seems to have the best effect with coral health long term. So I definitely say feed your tank if you can, and if you can't, uh, get a skimmer so that you can and get a, get a big one. <laughs> um, I do have one coral in particular that I'm, I'm very proud to own. It's a Blastomusa, but it's an unidentified species of Blastomusa. They're 
they're working on figuring out a name for it. It grows like a Blastomusa welsi um, in the size of the polyps and the colonial nature of that, but the stalks tend to grow more like a, off of a branch like the um, Blastomusa merletti. So it's kind of a, a weird hybrid that I've not seen anywhere else. I think myself, um, Julian Sprung, and there are maybe five or six other people in the country that own a, a piece of it, and I've been fortunate to share it with a couple other people um, as well, just to get kind of that extra security of having a new species in a couple other tanks in case, unfortunately, knock on wood, the, there is a tank meltdown or anything like that. So that, that's a cool coral and one of my favorites for sure. <laughs> Uh, the tank is illuminated by a six bulb T5 fixture. I have found that it's my favorite source of light as far as the accessibility of changing out bulbs and finding a, a spectrum that fits well um, to cover a lot of the photosynthetic needs of corals. Uh, the skimmer is a eShops S150 rated for 150 gallons, uh, which is by all means overrated for this size system, but I don't really believe that you can over skim unless you go way overboard. So with the amount of food that I put in this tank, um, it was necessary to beef up the skimmer. I also have two of the Two Little Fishes 150 reactors, um, media reactors. One is running Purigen and Carbon, and the other one has a Phosphate and Carbon um, mixture in that one as well. It's toned down through two different valves and then returns into my frag section of the sump where I keep a lot of um, the zoanthid frags that have overgrown the tank and that I'm rehabilitating. The return pump is a JBAL 3000. Um, I really like that return pump because it's a DC pump, which means that it's using very little electricity um, while providing a high amount of gallons per hour returned through the system. Pretty much silent. You would have to get pretty close up to the sump section to hear the difference between the skimmer pump and the return pump, which is something that was very important for me because um, I don't like a lot of noise coming from under the stand. So that's what I have as far as a flow um, return into the tank and my filtration in the sump. So the idea behind an algae turf scrubber is to provide an area that is more than optimal for algae to grow. Um, that allows it to grow in, in the area that you want, being the algae turf scrubber, rather than in your display tank where it becomes uh, a problem sum with a lot of the corals. So. The algae is actually a good thing and it becomes a filter because it uses um, ammonia, nitrites, and phosphates to grow and, and further its production um, while removing it from the water column that you have in your display tank and through the refugium. So it's very inexpensive, it's very easy to make. Um, there are multiple do-it-yourself manuals online as well as you can buy them and they really, really help your whole tank out because they don't remove a lot of the food and the proteins like protein skimmers do. They only take the nutrients out of the water once they've broken down into ammonia, phosphate, or, or nitrate. So um, definitely something I think that is underutilized in the aquarium industry and a lot of reefers can add on to their systems um, as extra filtration and they'll, they'll see a lot of their algae issues go away. Again, my name is Xavier Derus, and this is my 45 gallon. I want to do thank you guys for taking a look at the video, and uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to respond to my thread. I will love to answer them for you. Have a great day.